My guest today is Shar Brungy, who is a member of the Bella Vista Garden Club with me. Today we'll be talking about one of our favorite things, and that's gardening with kids uh, in our lives. They can be children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews, but it's always fun to garden with kids. Yes. There are several gardening events in June, and we will also talk about what you need to be doing in your garden this month. In the upcoming events area, June is the time we reap the rewards of all that planting we did in April and May, and you'll probably start to see a lot of color in your yard right now from all that planting. There are some also gardening activities going on in June to mark on your calendar. All this month, Local Gardening and the Bella Vista Garden Club are going to be featured at the Bella Vista, Bella Vista Historical Museum on Highway 71. And we have a brand new DVD that's going to be running on Continuous Loop. And we are about our work in the community. And there are also some displays that you might find interesting. It's always interesting to go there anyways. A special event in, on June 7th, if you're watching this in time to go to it, is the Garden Walk. And this is sponsored by the Garden Club. It mm -hmm. is an educational opportunity for people to see what succeeds in our rocky soil and maybe some creative ways to make plants succeed well in this soil. And this year we're going to go to um, a number of homes, six gardens, and then there's a meet and eat uh, stop at Metfield, and then also a stop at Village Garden Center where, where he has lots of deals for the occasion. You can get uh, tickets ahead of time at the Arvest Banks, um, or from any garden club members, and uh, or at Village Garden Center too for ten dollars, or they're available for twelve dollars a piece on the day of the sale at any of those locations, and you'll see signs up all over the village. Um, another thing that's happening in the state, but not too far away, is the Mount Magazine Butterfly Festival. It's on June twentieth and twenty-first, and Mount Magazine State Park is just east of Fort Smith, so it makes a nice day trip uh, for the family, taking kids out there and learning about the butterflies. Uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful trip for the whole family. And that's a natural way to ease <laughs> into our topic of today, doing things with kids. Yes. Um, I got my daughter involved uh, in our outdoor garden when she was a little girl, but Char today has some brought lots of ideas for kid-friendly gardening indoors and on your patio or deck. And um, I know that she's done a lot of projects with her grandson, haven't you, Char? Yes, I have. My grandson started out when he was about uh, two years old in the stroller. We visited the Peel Gardens, uh, Compton Gardens, and also um, the Ozark Botanical Gardens. It's a, a nice place to take children. They get to see the texture of the flowers, the trees, the leaves, and then after that you can move them to the grocery store to look at the produce. Uh, my grandson is eight now and we're doing more detailed projects, which we will talk about today. And he always eats his vegetables. I yes, know he that. does. Yes. <laughs> well, the first one we're going to talk about are terrariums. This is a larger, a little more formal uh, terrarium. I'm going to take the cover off so we can see that a little bit better. And there are all kinds of terrariums and it's a fun way to get a child started. I mean it's just small, you can have it in your kitchen, you can have it mm -hmm. anywhere in the house. And you start with small plants, maybe some tiny ivy. What do you we have, have there? Ivy and we have succulents. They work well. And we have moss different types of moss. This moss has little white flowers on it and we do have some ground cover that has blue flowers. I don't know if you can pick up the blue flowers. Anything that trails. We'll also use some of these things for our fairy garden as well. And the fairy garden's coming up next. Right. But another thing that's, that sets a terrarium apart from other kinds of 
gardening projects is that it does feature nature, natural things in it, in addition to the plants. For example, we have small rocks, shells can go into a, a, a terrarium. In our little mushrooms, we have some white ones in this terrarium, but there are also little uh, wooden mushrooms that you can put inside the terrarium. And of course, if you have children, you might want to uh, tape down the cover so that it doesn't fall off. And we're going to talk about Or get covers. yanked off, I think, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we'll talk about the covers, too. But first of all, I want to show this little guy. This is a little turtle who would be perfect in a terrarium when we have mm -hmm. things that are of nature. Now, I did have a question about the tops. Does the top always have to stay on the terrarium? No because if you have the top on all the time and you have moisture going down the sides, the plants will rot after a while. The idea is just to have enough moisture for them to grow. Now, if it gets real cloudy inside, you can take paper toweling and wipe the inside and then leave the cover off for maybe a day. And then later, once you see it's clear, you can put the cover back on. You can also mist with a little mister at, inside here to keep the uh, leaves moist. And if your terrarium gets overgrown, you can use uh, nail scissors or any type of little uh, type of scissors to trim the plants. You can pinch off the tops like this. You can just pinch the top off and then they'll get bushy. If they're too bushy on the side, just give them a little haircut along the side and keep your terrarium small. You don't want it growing up and over the top of the terrarium. One other little thing to, that's fun and whimsical to add to a terrarium and speaks of nature is a little birdhouse. And uh, we'll just poke this down in here, but I wanted to show it to you before I did that. There, little birdhouse. That's a little color. So okay. how about that fairy garden? Okay, let's work on the fairy garden. Fairy gardens can be indoors or outdoors. This happens to be an indoor one. Outdoor ones go under a tree, at the base of a tree, or anywhere in the garden where the children can access it easily. A little fence, we have a little white fence here, a little monkey grass in the back here to um, maybe simulate a tree. We have moss and you can have the dried moss or again you can go back and do the um, regular scotch moss and th this has a little bloom on the top. And I'm okay. going to add a shell and if you go to the, the beach with your child and have collected some shells, it's a good way to to use them and so it, mm -hmm. builds, it helps extend the memory. And we have the little mushrooms again that we talked about earlier. We'll add those. They have little picks on them and the children love putting all these little details in and there isn't a right or wrong way in no. the fairy garden. Which is good because I've never had a fairy garden so this is my first try and I'm going to put this bunny right here. Okay. Right by the moss. And the succulents look like little trees so they're kind of interesting and they, they can grow out and over the side. Here you can have things drooping over, even the ivy can go out and over the side of the um, fairy garden. Okay, if you have little pixies those are fun and a, a child might have a special little toy he wants to put in there like this little green dinosaur. And we also have some little cars. You can put Legos, here's a little uh, car to put in. Legos are, are wonderful because they're the little people that can go in the fairy garden. We could even put something a, a little bit larger. We have this bulldozer. We can take this out and put our bulldozer in. And they can play in the fairy garden. That's the big thing. They can make sure you have a little bit of dirt along the side so that they can add things, play with them, move things around because it's their little garden. You can make uh, little water features for the, the fairy garden. I used a cork and a, a bottle cover, and I'll just set that Making right here. Making a little bird bath. A little bird bath, or you could put it just on the, the floor of the fairy garden and have it as a little pond. And we have this little fence in here, mm -hmm. but another type of um, height ornament would be this little trellis. You can go in there. Right. And, okay. and, and maybe your vine could grow up it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and other things that you can use to plant with children, this happens to be a condiment set and it's just a, a little black ant and you could find some little flower pots to put in there. 
and you could use this to plant some little things. And then we also found an egg. Um, you're supposed to crack the top of the egg, and once you crack it, remove, I hope I can do this. This oh, is a ceramic not. egg, not a real yeah. egg. <laughs> well, you can use real ones if you wanted, but uh, that that's a different project. Okay, here's the top of it, and the marigolds will grow out of the top once you start watering it. Might even fit in here. Right. <laughs> you can, we can put it in there. Point okay. that. So you can see the soil is already in there. Mm -hmm. And the seeds. And they just have to water them, and right. like magic. That's really fun for a small child. And then after you've gone to the naturals game and you've had that soft serve ice cream, you can take back the, the little cap and turn it into a planter. And here you can add again your succulents. You can add a little frog. More succulents. And that's a different kind. We have about three different types of succulents to add, just to kind of fill in. And you can use some, some of the ground cover that we had and some of the moss as and well. And here's a little mushroom next to the frog. Okay. Yes. Then for the little girl in your life, you can just pick up a little plastic purse. Tell us about this. Okay, this little purse, um, you can pick them up anywhere at any store. And I put million bells, you want a little bit of color, um, a little um, lobelia, and then a little white flower in the front here just to give it a little color. And for a little whimsy, we'll stick in a, a butterfly a right butterfly. here. A little butterfly. Right, like that. Okay. And here are some other ornaments that you can add too, maybe even setting next to it, a mm -hmm. little butterfly sitting next to it. Okay, and then for children, they, they always have shoes or boots, and this happens to be a rain boot, and I put a plastic bag inside, and I'm going to cut the rest of the, the plastic bag away, and I put some Coreopsis to give it a little different color, and then it also comes with a tag, and sometimes you, if the children are older, they'll be able to read when to water it. Uh, they'll be able to read how much sun it needs and fertilization. And you can supervise them with the fertilization. So the tag can go in the back here. Okay. We also have a larger planter. And these are the, the famous Tonka trucks that the boys love so much. And for this one, you can put the pots inside. We may even have some grown-ups who still have the Tonka truck from their childhood. <laughs> and then put a little Spanish moss around it, and then they can water it. And that'll be a, another planter for your garden. Then are we yes. moving to the vegetables? Yes, we are moving to vegetables. Because... Um, there are different ways to involve children in growing vegetables, and it's, it helps them see why the food gets on the plate. Helps them appreciate how it, how it does. And this is an indoor or patio. Actually, this would work well on a patio. It go, yes. And this trellis is for climbing the like peas. peas. Right. And these are interesting little containers. You remove the top. This is easy for the children. The seeds are within the pod and whoops you um, put the pod right in the soil and just water it so you can help me on this side yes and we have peas we'll put the peas right here and we have radishes and we have some carrots and the carrots can go right next to the peas and we have a little bit of lettuce I think this one was the yes. lettuce one yes and so we're just going to water these, and I use two little clay pots to hold up the trellis, and we'll, we'll put some little rocks in here too to, to help hold. And the children will find this very easy to water, and you won't have to do much of anything with it. Now, not only do, will they water it, but they can um, help to, if there are several seeds, and there probably are several seeds in each pod, they'll need to be thinned in order to, mm -hmm. to continue to grow. And you can teach them how to gently thin out the seedlings and uh, to keep on watering them um, and, and to know when they need more water. And of course, harvesting and bringing them to the table and saying, I grew this. Right. 
And I did use organic soil. When I do gardening with vegetables for the children, I use the organic soil. Let's leave this here for a minute. Okay. Because um, I wanted to talk a bit about um, outdoor gardening with children. And as long as we have our mm -hmm. vegetables here, we can use this. Um, if you have a raised bed already with you know, a, a fence around it to keep the deer out and the raccoons and the other critters, um, or a, a raised bed that has uh, a netting over it, as a cover. Um, it's a great way to get children involved. Otherwise, if you don't have a cover on it, they're going to be disappointed when their, their plants don't take off. Um, if the children are small, you give them small tools to use. And we have a few today. I guess we can move that up. We have the gardening gloves, the cute little um, frog gardening gloves. And they're plastic, or, or rubberized, I should say, on this side. And they enjoy putting those on. And then little tools for them to use. And if they're white in color, you'll see them in the garden. You want something that's colorful because they will tend to leave them behind and you might never find them again until you are searching. And then there's a little hand cultivator here. And I like to go to the um, trial size cosmetic aisle and get a spray bottle. And that way you can mist your garden and they enjoy doing this misting that works well for those terrariums and too yes it does and then one last thing a child size visor they come in different colors and you can even paint on these we got these at hobby lobby you can so put I'll their name aside. on yes you can put their name on but a good idea another thing to do if you're planting outdoors with a child in an established garden is to give them a row that's their own let them decide what seeds they're going to plant. Guide them as they're doing it, you know, the work in the soil, make the row, plant the seeds, water, and that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, here's a tip that we were talking about earlier. Um, because there are snakes in Arkansas, if you put some scented kitty glitter in the garden bed, it will keep the snakes away. And that's... You, the children the, won't have to worry. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, I have had a few books that I wanted to talk about. So maybe we can set these okay. aside. Here we go. Okay. Here is Gardens from Cabbage. And it's how to make little easy gardens in your, in your house uh, from kitchen scraps. I think we've all tried, I think we've all tried to um, uh, grow, you know, a yam, for example, or an avocado. That's one of the one of the projects. Um, potatoes, and some are longer term, some are shorter term projects, and they are really just fun for kids to do. This um, book is for very young for young children. It's called Balcony Garden, and it has seven easy projects uh, that. Uh, you can do with your child with a little bit of help. This one I'm turning to shows an herb garden that's made from a, so a plastic soda bottle that's painted, and then the herbs grow out the side. Here he is with the, with the herbs growing out the side and out the top. And when I saw this, and the, this, is, this and the other books are all available from the Bella Vista Public Library. Here's another one, How, and this is for a slightly older child. Um, how do flowers grow? Where do they come from? What are the, the role of the birds and the animals in, in um, uh, spreading seed and helping them grow? Um, that's another good book. And then the last one, and this would be for very young readers, uh, Too Many Bunnies. It's not about having too many bunnies in your garden, but it is a little family of bunnies and getting them organized in order to make a garden work. Um, all the, the steps that need to be involved so children understand that about raking and hoeing and planting the seeds and watering. So that's a lot of good fun. Now we can turn to things to do in June. Um, first of all, and I'll reach over here for some props, uh, blooming right now are some roses and maybe you have some pansies that are still left from cooler weather. And primrose, 
And you, t you brought these from your garden. Well, uh, tell us about those, Char. Uh, this is the China Doll Rose. And the other uh, red ones are the Old Fashioned Climbing Roses. And then here we have some Dianthus, uh, which you may recognize as a carnation, and Clematis, the vine. And those should all be growing now. You can see how pretty the, the colors are coming out. I know some of my perennials aren't out yet, but the, um, a few of them are. Right. Yeah. And the, the carnations, the Dianthus have been in since November. And they made it through the winter. They're blooming now, as well as the pansies, the pansies that I have here. So let's talk about what to do in, in June after you've worked so hard in April and May. Uh, first of all, for your annuals, this is the last time to plant. So plant early. Uh, be sure to deadhead them often for continued bloom. Otherwise, they'll get leggy. Fertilizing and pinching back keeps your plants from growing tall and spindly. Now we add the herbs, and if you haven't finished planting, you need to do so this month. And I see that there is a lot of lavender out. Uh, I have some lemon balm. I have mint and sage, and of course, basil and parsley, the flat and the uh, broadleaf. And those are in containers so that uh, you can pick them and use them for cooking. And June is the time to harvest the garlic that you planted last October. Now, bulbs. Spider lily and naked lady bulbs can be planted for fall bloom. Uh, remove foliage of spring bulbs if it is brown, for example, from your um, daffodils and so forth. Make uh, succession plantings of gladiolus until July 1st, and if you grow dahlias, be sure to stake them. And I have some daylilies. The daylilies are going to be blooming soon. You need to deadhead the faded ones, of course and the mums. Pinch back those mums and I know already some of them are about uh, this tall and so you need to pinch those back so they'll be nice and bushy for July 15th. And that's the magic date isn't it? Yes it is. Yes it is. <laughs> now if you have a lawn and have Bermuda grass fertilize it every 30 to 45 days and mow it to maintain a height of one and a half to two inches. Uh, fescue can grow a little uh, higher uh, maintain a height of two and a half to three inches. Uh, in, in, either, in either event, uh, lawns require a deep watering of one inch weekly. And roses, and we have these beautiful roses, they need a lot of fertilizer right now and we deadhead the ones that uh, are kind of falling apart or you can pick them and bring them inside. Uh, be sure that you work in a little Epsom salt and that's for when um, your uh, soil test shows that it's low in magnesium. And water those roses. They need to be watered from the bottom so that they do not get spots on the leaves. And lastly, June is when those Japanese beetle bugs arrive. And they love the plants, especially in the rose family. And we did have a, a disease that was going through the roses last year. Rosette? It, uh, it continues on, but if you cut them back, it seems like the roses are doing pretty well this year. Trees and shrubs will need a little tr pruning right now. Uh, dead limbs and also the tiny limbs that start right on the tree trunk. Uh, you, you keep those, trim those back and the energy will go up to the rest of the tree. Uh, newly planted trees and shrubs should be watered deeply each week until they're well established. And uh, mulch the trees, but leave a few inches between the trunk and the mulch so that the trunk doesn't rot. Uh, that will help keep them healthy. And then for the shrubs, you prune your spring blooming shrubs after they bloom. Next we're working on the um Vegetables, we need to monitor those for watering and also for the animals. You might need to cage them or put uh, a wire mesh around them. Uh, fertilize the tomatoes and begin harvesting the vegetables and the strawberries that are arriving. And when you start uh, looking at those uh, tomatoes, make sure that uh, they don't have the bugs on. And yes. If they have bugs, then take care of it right away. Yes. Also, don't forget to just enjoy your garden. Um, take some time just to sit and enjoy your efforts and uh, watch the birds and butterflies enjoy it too. It's, it's, a lot of, it's a good time before it gets really hot to sit out there with a glass of iced tea and just enjoy. 
If you have any other questions about gardening in June, remember the Master Gardener Hotline is available on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 o'clock to 12 and 1 to 4. Just call 271-1060 to speak to a Master Gardener. Also, their website, bentoncountygardening.org, is filled with gardening information. And that's not the only good website that's local and is filled with good information, and that's the, I'd like to direct you to also, the uh, bellavistagardenclub.com website. Uh, all the, there are DVDs from each one of these programs are on there, as well as uh, articles on um, organic gardening, uh, drought tolerant plants, and um, making your yard bird friendly. Uh, our club doesn't meet in the summer. We take the summer off. Our next meeting it will be September 24th at 11 o'clock at United Lutheran Church on Cooper Road, and we would like to invite you to attend. So thank you, Shar, for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. This has just been so much fun. It, it was fun. And, um, you know, it makes me want to go take a bunch of stuff out to California when I visit my grandchildren. <laughs> and I hope everyone in the audience has fun with their grandchildren and gardening with kids. Yes. I yes. know that the uh, Bella Vista Boys and Girls Club has raised beds, and so you might want to check out there and see what the children are doing with their gardens. I think more and more schools are having some gardens too, and that's, that's really helpful. And the fun thing is the children get to pick the vegetables, bring them home in little Ziploc bags, and eat them. Yes, yes, that's from the Boys and, and Girls Club. And they even try the spinach. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the program, and we'll tune in again next month. Until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. <laughs>